Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I'm your host, Vasavi Kumar. I don't usually say my whole name. I don't know why I felt the need to just do that. But I this is Vasavi Kumar. Here I am, your host of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I'm in a little bit of a giddy mood. Today has been a beautiful day so far, a beautiful way to start off Monday, just flowing into the week like I'm going down a slippery slide. It's wonderful. And I'm even more excited because today I have one of my Say It Out Loud group members, Alex Davis, who I'll be introducing you shortly to. She's wonderful. She's inside the program and we're almost through with the program. We finished July 8th and we have another round of the Say It Out Loud program coming up August 5th. And so what I always love to do when I'm like midway or like closer to the end of my programs is I want to bring on the people who are in my programs because it's, you know, I could keep barking at y'all to join my programs and tell you why it's so fabulous, but you know what? Proof is in the pudding, baby. So I wanted to bring on the clients, the wonderful women, the smart, brilliant women that are inside the program. And you'll be hearing, um, you know, the next few episodes will be with me and the members of the Say It Out Loud group program. These are women that I trust. These are women that I respect. These are women that I would hire for my services, for any services that I needed. Um, and so I'm so thrilled um, to have Alex Davis on the podcast. Hi, Alex. How are you today? Hello. I'm great. How are you? I am chilling. You know, it's a well, I, I'm not chilling. It's 105 degrees here in Austin, Texas. So I take that back. I'm not chilling. Oh, wow. Like maybe 95 here in Florida. Oh, it is, it is hot here. Like I, I mean, literally, I was driving, and I, and my entire, and I'm wearing a tennis skirt, and so my seat is entirely soaked because I am sweating on the seat. But you know, th- that's just Texas life here. So, anyway, I wanted to get into today's episode, and I wanted to first start off by just asking you, you know, first of all, thank you for being here, taking your time out of your day for being here on the podcast. Um, you're a member of the Say It Out Loud group program. It's a 12 week program. And what I'd first love for my audience to hear is a little bit about you, like what you do, who you help, tell us like who you are as a human being. And then what, what inspired you or what sparked something inside of you to join the program? Okay. All right. Let's go. Hey, I'm Alex. I am a Florida native. I'm but in practice, I'm a CPA and I'm also a certified financial planner. And mm-hmm. so in my business, I prepare tax returns. I do a ton of financial planning as well as tax planning. And in my mm-hmm. personal life, I'm just a girl from the South. I was a teen mom and I have now a 17 year old and a four year old. So you're probably thinking, gosh, she loves a challenge. I do. I do. It's very challenging having that, that, that age range of girls, but no, it's, it's been great. Oh, let's see. Is anything? I'm a Virgo. You're a Virgo. Okay. In case anyone's checking for me. Hey. <laughs> We're open. Shoot your shot. <laughs> so, for it. so yeah, what made you join? First of all, I don't even remember, like, how did you, how did you find me? And how did you find out about the Say It Out Loud program? And what made you join? So I found you, I am, I'm, I follow a, a different coach, um, April. Mm-hmm. And so I, I saw you liking some of her posts or something. And I was like, oh, okay, let me see who this person is yeah. and your voice. I think it was your voice. You have such a strong, powerful voice and your messaging. It was just so authentic. Like this is what it is. And that's just that. And that's what I am looking to also be is this is what it is showing up and walking in whatever that is for me and being unapologetic about it. And so because you had it, I'm a person, I don't want to recreate a will. So if someone is already displaying those types of characteristics that I want, I'm like, okay, this is what I need to talk to. And so I just followed you and then you had the program and you actually messaged me and said, hey, we've connected before. Uh, I'm opening this program, think about joining. And I saw it and I was like, sure, I'll consider it. And I went and looked and I was like, say it out loud. I was like, no, I don't have a problem saying it out loud. No, Mm -hmm. I don't need this. Mm -hmm. And then I was sitting, I was up one night um, on one of my common research binges. Mm -hmm. And I came, I went back and looked at that email and I went back and looked at the program. I was like, no, based on like the description, this will work for me. I think this will be a good fit. And so then I, I signed up, paid in full, and I was like, let's go. And probably one of the best decisions I've made. I've made a ton of progress. I think we're going into week eight. Eight. 
We're going into week eight this Friday. Can you believe that? Yeah, and I'm 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 genuinely not the same. Um, I've been <laughs> the most serious. No, seriously. Like internally, um, internally, and internally, and it's now affected how I show up in my business, how I show up in personal relationships, it's just all aspects. Um, I like I. It's just so much. You can't describe exactly what's going to happen, and it's really authentic. Um, and then I think. Even the women that are that are in the program so far, we just all really gelled really well, and it's been supportive. And I think we've all grown just a lot. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I'm literally like taking this all in. You know, here's the thing: as some, it's funny because like saying it out loud, doing this work is is uh is is very automatic for me. It's very habitual. It's natural for me to do this. It's it's something that I've taken for granted, to be honest, because it comes so naturally to me, right? Just saying it out loud, being myself, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's just me. So when I hear you even being like, yeah, okay, I'm going to join. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't know what email you opened up, what I said, because I say a lot of shit, you know, and I say a lot of things in my email. But regardless of that, something spoke to you. And so as someone who is, you're in business, you have, you have a, a thriving CPA practice, you have two daughters, you are a single mother, um, and, and all, all the stuff that you have going on, you know, one of the biggest things people say, people say is I don't have time. I don't have time to work on, I don't have time to work on myself, right? I don't, I don't have the time. I mean, I don't think money was an issue. You were able to pay in full the $500. Um, and right now, everyone, just to let you know, early bird pricing is $500, or you can do a three-part payment of 200 after early bird pricing, price does go up to 750 and there is a three-part payment plan. But, you know, I would look at someone like you and I want to, you know, maybe assume like, oh, she's not going to have time to join my program. So how have you been able to uh, incorporate the program into your life, right? Like how much time has it taken up for you or has it taken up a lot of your time? Like how, how is that for you, the structure? I make it happen. Like unless there's an emergency, um, you, you get the schedule right away. So mm -hmm. we have the schedule and it's just on my calendar. And so unless it's literally an emergency, I show up. And even if I can't be on camera, I just show up. And so I, for me, I decided, and that's where it started. I decided, and I know I can't pour from, from an empty cup. And so if I don't start with me, not, to me, and I don't know how everybody else is, but for me, I knew I had to make sure that I was right. And then everything that someone else now touches me is going to be right because it started within. And so I just prioritize it. And, and, I, and I, that's all I can say is I prioritize it. You know what? And, and that, is, that is more than enough. And I appreciate the, like, I want everyone hearing this, right? Like, here's the thing. People struggle with or they, or they think like, oh, the time, the money, the commitment. But it's like actually all of that follows, but the first step is to make the decision. So you just decided, I'm going to do this. And then everything else just happened naturally. You made the time for it, right? Like, like you had to decide first. So I really appreciate you saying that because that's something that inside the group I push on you guys. It's like, no, make a decision. Like, stop with these, like, wishy-washy, like, I don't know what I want. Like, no, you do know what you want. You just haven't decided yet, right? You're scared and it's okay. Maybe you're not ready. And the being ready part is, is not about, oh, you're not good enough, you're not capable, but internally, vibrationally, energetically right. being ready. You were ready. So you said yes. Correct. Because because what I have found, when you are ready to do something, you mm -hmm. find the money, yeah. you find the time, you make the commitment. And so that's what happened. It was on my calendar. When someone calls, can you do this? No, I cannot. It's on my calendar. Like, yeah, that, mm -hmm. I am unable to do anything on the, t on the time that my meetings are scheduled. Mm hmm and, Beautiful. And, you know, that's just that. And it's worked out really well. So we're going to segue into the next uh, portion of our interview. These are the questions that I ask everyone, Alex. We're going to have a great time. Don't think too hard about it. This is, okay. this is, this is our rapid fire. Just whatever. We're just going to go through them, okay? So um, what's something you've never been able to do well? Skate. <laughs> what, you're, what you're doing now. You're I'm skating. doing that now. Um, so I have not been able to skate well or put on, um, eyelashes, like the, um, mm -hmm. extensions. Yeah. yeah. The eyelash extensions. It's a mess. 
Are you okay? So the skating thing, you signed up for classes. Once you joined the program, isn't that a result of the program? By the way, it is because it was a challenge. It was a challenge, and so I actually we did week two on Saturday, and I'm better. I'm better in a week, and so and I was actually having fun. It's so funny because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I miss this in my childhood because I never forced myself to learn or, or no one was like, hey, you really need to learn this. But it was so much fun. It was a good workout. My girls like it. I was like, oh my goodness. So I'm, I'm like excited to go weekly now. <laughs> oh my God, you should totally create some content with you. You should totally create some content with like, you could be holding somebody's tax return and it was like, it's around April 15th and you're like skating and you're like, don't forget your taxes. Hire me. Here I am. I'll be, find me on the, find me on my roller skates just cruising down the boardwalk. No, like for real. And I love that. And I, what I love is like, I was thinking about this in the shower, Alex, is like, when did we become so practical? Nothing about the universe and nothing about God, nothing about the way our life is set up. Nothing makes sense, right? So why the hell are we so practical? Like, why can't you as a single mom who who has a CPA practice at the age of whatever, however old you are, start skating? Like, there's nothing weird about that. Says who? So I love that for you. All right. Next question. What's something you think everyone should try at least once? Listen, don't be dirty, all right? We might have I kids. <laughs> I know this is well, I mean the first thing that came first thing that came to my mind, I thought of an edible. Oh well, I, everyone <laughs> needs to eat an edible. I will tell you right now. <laughs> listen, l- let me tell you this. So I, okay, let's just talk about edibles for a second. So I don't smoke weed anymore because my voice, I'm trying to really preserve my voice because I'm doing voiceover work. So I do not smoke weed. I do not inhale it. Nothing. I don't do weed pens. Nothing. So the whole day I'm like completely just me. Like I just, I need to be a clear channel. I don't want to have it. But at night, so I have these 10 milligram edibles and I just take half. A five milligram will knock me on my ass in the best way possible. I'm in my feelings. I have all these ideas. I'm like, everything is good in my world. Like, it's just like opened me up. So yes, (laughs) here I, everyone's like, boss, aren't you in recovery? It's like, yeah, I used to have a cocaine problem. I'm okay okay with a little edible here and there. Yeah, we're we're allowed to change our minds. Okay, so you think everyone should eat an edible once? Yes, at least once, but make sure you pace yourself. Pace yourself. I'm all about halfsies. I do not take a whole one right away because that will, I'll start to, I I swear to God, like I start seeing shadows and shit and I'm like, no, I can't do this. Yeah, yeah. Not the hard way, so just, you know. No, don't do that because, yeah, because then you'll be traumatized. But like, yeah, take take half or whatever. Let it ease in and and in an hour, you'll be like, good. So like time that shit out. It's great. All right. Perfect. I didn't think you were going to say that. I love that. All right. Um. If you had to work on only one project for the next year, what would it be? My Yeah, it would be my financial literacy course. So, mm. I mean, just per- getting perfecting that, trying that out with clients because that's one of my passions for sure. Mm-hmm. That would be that would be a project. I love that for you. And you know what when you when you create that course, think about how many people will be able to learn financial literacy that maybe did not have access to that course, right? Because, yes. It, yeah, so you're making that accessible to people who may not normally have that knowledge, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Absolutely. I love that. Um, last question of this rapid fire. When you have 30 minutes of free time, how do you pass the time? Ooh, I, w- I love to um, meditate and journal. Mm-hmm. And so I there's this app, Insight. I highly recommend it. I'm, I'm on, on it. it. I'm on it. Oh, I love insight. I'm like on that's it. my that's my go to, and it could be whatever. So if I'm like if I if I'm feeling anxious, I'll throw that uh, I'll throw a meditation on from that and and journal. Uh, so yeah, I love insight. So can I give you a suggestion with I'll insight? So I have a bunch of meditations on Insight Timer. I get like a, a little bit of passive income from them every month because I, I put podcast episodes up there. I put meditations. I'm going to plant the seed in your head. And y'all listening, this is what I do with my clients. I do not hold back my genius. But if it comes to me, I'm going to share it. Alex, if you love listening to meditations so much, what I would do is write out a financial or like a money meditation and upload it yourself to Insight Timer. Oh, wow. 
Wow. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, think about it. You you listen to enough meditations and like really get yourself into the zone. Take that edible, you know, get get yourself into that or not or no edible. You don't need the edible to be creative, but whatever. You know, um sit and then like walk people through like a money meditation or like a wealth abundance, wealth energetics, like something great. And you can start making a little passive income from inside timer. Thank you for that. I have thought of that. Here's the thing, y'all. When you start learning how to say it out loud, what this is really about at the core of what I'm teaching is that you start to value yourself. You start to value what you bring to the table. It's hard for you to value yourself if you're if you talk to yourself like a jerk. If you're not nice to yourself, if you're not respectful, of course you're gonna have a hard time using your voice. You're basically shutting yourself down, right? The voices in your head basically keep you stifled and suppressed. But once you start to open up that throat chakra, once you start to start saying it out loud and inside our community chat, you know it's popping in on the Voxer. We're always talking, we're always, and sometimes we have silence because silence is good too. Silence is excellent to let everything kind of simmer. But the when you unlock that throat, when you unlock that inside of you, that 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 like, oh shit, I have a lot to offer. You could start using your voice in many different ways. You can start um, helping people through meditations. You know, you can start using your voice in that way. You could start a financial literacy podcast. So see, you, I mean, you're one person, but think about all the different ways in which you can help people, right? I have a podcast. I have a book coming out on my Instagram. I have my email. I have my insight timer. I do keynote speaking. Think about it. you use your voice in many different ways. So do not be shy with how you use your voice. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Ross. You're welcome. Okay, so we're going to get into the next round of questions. Okay, so how do I wait? I want to see which question I want to ask you here. Okay, when did you learn that it was safer to lie than it was to say things out loud? in elementary school uh, a, a specific example I remember when I could not spell the word dinosaur and I cheated on the test I, it was either it must have been first or second grade and I felt safer not like telling my mom that I had done that and then telling the truth and asking for help now and how it came about for me was just that I, it just wasn't a it wasn't a safe it didn't feel safe and when it doesn't feel safe it feels better to just not tell the truth like because if you lie you don't get you don't have to feel a certain way you can you can bypass it and what's that feeling that you think you bought you were trying to bypass as a kid shame disappointment um sometimes anger so i didn't want to feel that or receive that and so i'm like well I'll just 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 lie don't don't mm -hmm. fully say what's going on and then, I mean, obviously in the moment it feels good, but then it doesn't. Well, yeah, because you bypass those extremely hard emotions with like any, no one wants to feel shame. You bypass that and it's in, you know, temporarily it feels good, but you're the one that has to live with the lie. Right. Yeah. So, um, how is it now for you? Like, what do you, what do you do? I mean, listen, this is a very real conversation as adults, adults still lie. Like that, that shit doesn't just go away. Like, you know, what do you do now? If you, if you notice you want to lie, right? It's not that you like, what do you like? Because we all have that. Of course I have that tendency. I would rather be like, no, I'm fine. Like, like, like my version of lying is like, no, I'm good. Even though I'm like, fuck you motherfucker. Like you, you know what I mean? Like I won't actually say that, but I'm the, I would, I lie by saying, oh, I'm good even though I'm not good. So like I notice myself and I immediately, I've trained myself to just be more honest with how I feel. So like, what do you do when you notice yourself wanting to lie? I think it, it depends on the setting. Mm -hmm. um, like if I feel, if I feel safe in an instance where like, no, I don't feel good. Um, if I feel in safe space, I'll, I'll disclose it and, and talk more. Um, I may not have the most healthy mechanism sometimes. I won't necessarily always say anything depending on the situation. Mm. Cause I'm like, 
Is omission a lie? It could be. So it could be. This is a great conversation, actually, and we don't have to go deep into it, but I think it's something that people str like wonder and I, you know, even sometimes struggle with. So I think safety is really important in a relationship, right? If I don't feel safe with someone, I will omit and, I'll, and I, I will omit. And I do that because my nervous system feeling calm is more important to me than Having to, like, here's the thing. If I don't feel safe in a relationship, that relationship is not that solid anyway, period. If I, and like, like, so I don't, I, first of all, you know, by the grace of God, knock on wood, I, I don't have a single relationship in my life that I don't feel safe in. Even with my own mother, Alex, um, and my mother was the one that I always lied to because she was explosive in her reactions. She just didn't know how to handle it, right? Like, she's not, you know, I think a lot, a lot of parents get freaked out. They don't want their kids, you know, so... Even now, I just don't tell her everything. I don't lie. I just she doesn't need to know my whole business. She doesn't need to know everything. So, but I th that's why I think community is so is so important. So, do you think being part of the community has helped exercise that muscle of being more honest with your feelings? Yes, because you can pop in the group and just say, "Hey, I just wanted to say this out loud." Mm. Um, and then also with the weekly meetings, there are check ins, and mm -hmm. you're able to express yourself, especially when you're just learning to do it. Like you mentioned earlier how it's it, 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 it's easy for you. That has not always been me. Mm. And so it's a great place to start, especially when it's unfamiliar. You know, there's some of us who are in relationships that, are, that we don't feel safe in. And so then to be able to go into the community and be like, hey, this happened this week. This is what I need to say out loud. And, and it's not about anybody hopping on and trying to fix you and say, mm -hmm. hey, you should do this, you should do that. No, it's just being heard, just being able to get it out. And so it's just not festering inside and causing all these things. Because, I mean, for me, I don't speak for me personally, I make up all kinds of stories in my head. Like, I've played out a scenario to the mm. T, but it's inside. But once you actually speak it, then you now you've heard it. And some, they can give you a, a chance to say, wait a minute. Is that really what's going on right now? Or, you know, it just gives you a, a second to to think about it more because now it's out. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's what. <laughs> no, and, and I, 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 I love hearing people talk about my program. That's why I'm sitting here, like, looking at you so adoringly. I'm like, oh, my God, I love what she's saying. No, but it's so true. And I say this to y'all. I don't market this program as a business program. And I, you, you really helped me see that, by the way, because I remember I was thinking of doing, like, a Say It Out Loud business version. And you were like, yeah. first want to be like, Voss, this has already helped me in my business. Like, you don't need a business version. Uh, and it's so it, I, I say this to all of you, like, this is just practice. If you can practice being brutally honest, rigorously honest in this group and realize, okay, you have a place where you can go to where you're not being judged, then you start to see that that needs to be your norm. That needs to be your default. You need to be surrounded by people, not just in our community, but like anyone in your life. You need to have th these types of people in your life. So this is really like where you take your training wheels off. I want you to take yeah. the training, because there's so many of us that are so successful at what we do. We're already like, at, you know, we're getting to the top of our game or we're feeling really good, but we have this habit and we're in the practice of lying. And I say that with no judgment. I was the biggest liar. That's what I got in trouble for all the time. That's why I've, I, even in my book, in my acknowledgement section, I say to my mother, thank you for making me, turning me into an honest person. Because my mother used to hit me when I lied. Of course, like, that kept me wanting to lie more. But eventually I became a very, on, I, I, I just learned to become honest, especially in my recovery. You, we don't stay sober by lying. You know, we stay sober by being honest, you know, about, about our shit. So I just really appreciate what you're saying about the group because I think a lot of times when people think like group programs, it's like, oh, I don't need that. Oh, I'm already, I'm already making this much money. It's like, no, dude, it has nothing to do with the external stuff. Like you started off saying you feel different on the inside, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred, a hundred percent. And that's and and I did, I did stop you. And I said, wait, no, 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 no. This program, it is going to affect your business. It all starts within. If you're, if, if within you're allowing yourself to, to not, you know, not, I don't want to say allowing yourself, but if you have this, you feel unworthy mm -hmm. when you, when clients come about, you may accept things that you, you, you don't mm -hmm. want because mm -hmm. you don't feel the worthiness and you don't, um, you haven't quite flexed the muscles enough to, 
to say, no, this is not going to work. This is what I want. Mm -hmm. in, yes. In, in job, being able to say, no, that's not the salary that I'm okay with. Like, mm -hmm. You're willing to express yourself. That starts within. Yeah. Remember you said that you had a, I get, I think you were, you had given a client or proposal and they came back to you and you were like, no, this is not going to work for me. Like, you know, but it's like, you're, you bit, you're in the practice now of exercising your voice, right. And saying the truth, you're, you're like, literally your throat, your voice is becoming used to just speaking your truth. So you literally cannot lie anymore. Do you get what I'm saying? You cannot yes. deny your truth because it's, I want everyone to hear this. It's like a muscle. If you are, if, if you have exercised the muscle of lying and self-deception and self-betrayal, then to, to practice being unfuckwithable or to practice being an honest person, it's literally just practice. You're in the habit of lying. We're getting you in the habit of telling the truth. Yes. That's it. So, um, I, I really do appreciate your honesty in this. Like it takes, I mean, by the way, y'all, these questions that I'm asking, Alex, I ask this to every single one of my guests. So like for me, this is even more special because you're someone, um, you're someone who's joined my program and this shows the testament of the work. Like I'm asking you questions that I've asked, that I ask people who, who maybe are, like I've already done this work for years. You know what I mean? But I'm asking this to you and you're just like, eight weeks into the program. It just shows the power of the work when you decide, which you did. Yeah. You decided. Beautiful. All right. Uh, what is something that you've been wanting to say out loud, but haven't? So this will be like your first place where you're going to say it. <laughs> so what's something you've been wanting to say out loud, but you haven't yet? That I have not, but I've wanted to. Yeah. Do. And let me. Okay. I, I was going to give you. I was going to. Okay. No, never mind. Okay. No, you sure? You sure? Um, okay. I was going to give you a little parameter. I want it to be something about you that you're now owning. What's something about yourself? Like, we're so used to talking shit about ourselves. We're so used to being like, I'm like this, I'm like that. Fuck all that noise. Not any of that stuff. Like, what's something about yourself that you're like, damn, yes. And maybe you haven't said it out loud because you were told that you're arrogant for saying shit about yourself or you're being braggy or, oh, I can't, I, I can't, I, I always have to say, you know, you know, humble myself just a little bit, right? So that's the context. Now you can okay. run with it. No, thank you for that. Um, then I would say I am the authority in conquering my financial goals. Um, and I say that because, you know, when I look back and I work with my clients, when they set financial goals, like I'm a beast. You, t This is what you want to do? We're going to make it work. Figuring out the plan on how to make it work. And when I think even back to myself, if I have that financial goal in mind, I, I figure it out. And so um, I actually left my corporate job in October of 2021. Wow. And, I, and I've been able to ooh, build my, my practice like my way. I have not really had to take on clients that I did not want. Be, and it's because I built this financial foundation that get, has given me the confidence to say, you know what, I want to take a class. I'm going to take this class because bettering myself, I know that's only going to play out in, in my business and also my personal relationships. And it was just a goal of mine and I knew I wanted to do it. And I've worked with so many of my clients and while I'm a CPA by trade and I'm good, I'm, I'm great at that too, but it's that financial piece that it's like this perfect trifecta. Cause it's like, okay, I'm going to get you how to get this money and do that. But on tax wise, I'm going to show you how to save it as well. So I guess that's something I don't say out loud very often because it does seem like braggy and well, what if, what if somebody thinks that it's different, but what I'm learning and walking into more is so what? So what if they think that that's not on me? What and it's like, and, and it's like, what good, what good does it serve you to be like, oh, uh, I, I guess I'm kind of good. It's like, fuck no, I don't want to hire you then. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're not even, if you're not even feeling yourself, why should I? Right. You know what I mean? So thank you. And uh, we will definitely put your information in the show notes for anyone. Do you only take clients in Florida? No. So I can take clients all over. Okay. Awesome. All okay. Well, all over the U.S. I okay. Say that. Okay, great. Uh, okay. Next question. Hmm. What is something that you want to encourage my audience to say more of out loud? 
what you desire. I think truly speaking to what it is that you desire. Um, I think sometimes we don't actually express it. And then if you don't express it, you don't go for it. And sometimes, you know, we're living in situations that are not serving us, but we're not speaking to our desires. So I encourage you to whatever it is, big, small, whatever, if you desire something, speak to it. I love that. Thank you. And lastly, um, okay, I got one more question. Two more questions. What do you say out loud to yourself when you look in the mirror? Because, uh, hello, everyone. By the way, if you're not on the wait list for the Say It Out Loud book, please go to vasvikumar.com forward slash wait list. One of the things that I teach you in the book, it's chapter one on how to talk to yourself. I recommend that every single exercise at the end of the chapter that I give you, um, that you make it a habit to stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself. And I like, I meet people all the time who are like, oh, I don't do that. It's like, you don't look at yourself. You need to look at yourself. You need to look at yourself and you need to gauge what you're saying to yourself about yourself. If you want to know how little or how much you love yourself, stand in front of the mirror. That's it. That's that's how I know where I'm at. If I'm in front of the mirror and if I'm saying unkind shit, okay, we got to work on that. We got to work on that, right? But if you're not looking in the mirror, that tells me that you're avoiding yourself. And why would you avoid yourself? You're with yourself your entire life. So what is something that you say when you look out loud, when you, when you stand in front of the mirror? What's something that you say out loud to yourself? Well, um, <laughs> right now, it's, you're getting snatched. Um, I've, yes, you I've, are. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> um and then just like other things i say i am enough and i mm -hmm. am the yes and so that's just me reminding myself you are worthy you are enough so i say that and then right now i'm, I'm also on a weight loss journey that i've been on for the past actually i started like a couple weeks before i joined say it out loud just being really intentional about my health and i've lost 25 pounds in wow. over these last um eight weeks Wow. And, yeah. And so now I'm looking like, I'm like, okay, girl, you're getting it. You're so, uh, <laughs> so I talk to myself like I'm talking to a friend that I'm, I'm encouraging, like you, you are it. That's it. I know you're like, and, and and I'm just curious to know this, this question came up. So I know you're, you're, you're eating right. You're going to the gym. Do you think that, and that, and that obviously, you know, losing weight is numbers, right? Calories in calorie. We know that, but I'm curious to know, do you think that, saying it out loud and freeing yourself, freeing yourself of any shame, embarrassment, humiliation, has that helped lighten you up? You get what I'm saying? Like sh shed the emotional weight. Do you know what I mean? You know, I, yes, I absolutely. Absolutely. I believe that because sometimes, especially in women, like when we're holding on to stuff, we eat a lot. We eat and yeah. it just, and it, and it hangs on and it hangs in there. That could very well be it because I have been, <laughs> I have been much freer yeah. lately with just expressing myself. And it's not to be nasty or anything, but it's just being authentic and true to myself. Like I, I, I can't sit here, like you said earlier, I can't lie to somebody else. No, that doesn't make me feel good. So now I'm mm. just, Hey, this is what it is. And if it doesn't work for you, I'm okay with with whatever it is, but I've started with myself. I was true to myself and then I don't, I don't feel bad. I love what you said about, you know, you being honest. It's not about being nasty. I think people really need to get that. When I say, say it out loud, say it out, saying it out loud doesn't mean that you're a dick at all. It means that you're honest. Mm -hmm. And, and when you're clear, like, have you ever met someone, Alex, that you could, it's all, I, I've met clients like this too, when they're just starting to exercise their boundaries great but they, they like don't know how to say them they don't they, because they've been they've been so boundaryless for so long and then once they start to have boundaries they think they need to be a, like they need to say it in a very aggressive harsh way and it's like you don't boundaries don't make you bitchy right like or you're not bitchy for having boundaries in fact when i think about saying it out loud being honest it's cool it is calm it is chill because here's the thing when you are clear within you don't need to over explain yourself you don't need to be aggressive in somebody's face it's like nope this is what it is yeah and it can be held with love i'm honest with everyone no i and i it's for me it's two things i'm honest and I'm always going to honor the dignity of my spirit and your spirit. I do not need to make you feel like shit in order for me to be honest, right? Honesty does not equal I'm going to hurt you, right? And, and there's there's so many layers to it, right? So many of us, especially women, we we have placed the responsibility on ourselves to manage other people's emotions. And it's like, 
when you start to handle yourself and your emotions, you realize like, it's really not my job to manage your emotions. It's my job to be honest and you, you know, and, and, and deliver it in a way that feels good for me, but you do not have control over how other people respond, you know? Right. And, and you, you just, you don't, you do not yeah. have that level of control, but, but realizing that sometimes it's tough because it is like, well, I don't want them to think this or that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can't control that anyhow. Yeah. No matter how you say it. Yeah. And what I have found is even when someone has said something to me and I have felt a way, it wasn't what they said. It was me, how I received it, what was going on in my life, what had happened to me in my past that mm-hmm. caused these things. And so when I started to realize that, it, that also helped me realize there's nothing that I can say to someone um, that's going to really control th- them. Like, because I they have every the nastiest thing. Everyone has received that way. Well, and here's the thing. This is what you realize is because when you work on your own stuff, you realize your own narratives, you realize your own shit, you stop you stop taking anything personally because how someone chooses to perceive your truth is directly related to how they view themselves. So let's just say, Alex, let's just say right now, you said to me after this interview, Vasavi, I really don't want to join, I don't want to stay in the program anymore. I could take it personally. And be like, what did I do wrong? And I might, I might ask you and have a conversation. But for me personally, I know where I'm at in my life. If you were to say that to me, I would ask you, is everything okay? And if you're like, no, I just, I, you know, I just, I would let you go. I would because I'm not in the business of clutching on, holding on to people, right? Like, pl- please don't leave the program. But you know, you know what I mean. No, but I'm just saying, like, you start to, like, if someone doesn't want to work with me, if someone doesn't hire me, I don't take that shit personally. Like, it's nothing to do with me. Do you realize when you start to understand your own internal landscape and how complex our minds are, you're like, oh, everyone else is this way. So you, it's not personal. Nothing is personal. That's it. That is it. And that's powerful in, in business because I have found like in the past, I would, when I would get on a sales call, it was all, I'm looking for them for the yes to the, almost validate me that yes, I'm great. I'm this. Mm-mm. Not anymore. I, I show up and, you know, I present my information, but, and then whether it's a yes or no, I don't make that mean anything about me. Yes. And my <laughs> worth and my talent. I don't do that. And I can, I can, and honestly, I did that before. That was definitely Damn. something that came up all the time. I would get off the call. I'm like, oh my gosh, what? I guess I didn't, I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't this. And, I, and it was just like, that doesn't mean any of that. It's funny where our minds go. And, and, yeah. our, our, and that narrative is something that we work on inside the program. What are you making it mean about you? What's the story that you're telling yourself? Because the story, literally, we are the authors of our life. So what story are you writing right now? You know, what story are you narrating? So um, last question, Alex, this has been so wonderful um, just to kind of talk to you like one-on-one like this, because I don't think we've, we've, we've always had a group. So this has just been so nice to talk to you one-on-one. Um, where can people find you? How can they connect? Yeah. So I am on Instagram. My name is Alexandria Chanel, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-I-A. <laughs> C-H-A-N-E-L underscore C-P-A. Um, yeah. And I'm also that on Facebook as well. And then if you want to get super fancy, you can reach out on my business website, which is www.agataxservices.com. Beautiful. We'll put all that in the show notes. Um, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the Say It Out Loud podcast. Yeah. Everyone listening, I'm going to put all the information for the next round of the Say It Out Loud program is August 5th. Right now we are an early bird, which means uh, full price is 500 and three payments of 200 uh, After that, the price does go up to 750 Alex, were you going to say something? Yes. If you are thinking about joining, don't delay. Just go ahead and seriously, I mean, I mean this in all sincerity wait i want to video you saying this hold on oh (laughs) okay go ahead go ahead um so no i was just saying if you're thinking about joining don't don't hesitate this is probably going to be one of your best investments ever um you go really deep and you learn things about yourself that you probably didn't think that you were going to learn joining to this program i saw a difference after week Four. Like, e- e- like immediate difference that ha- have allowed me to change how I communicate in my home 
in my business professionally and it's only made more room for growth and abundance in my life and I truly 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 encourage you if it has come across and you've even thought about it for a second do it it's because it happens for a reason you already know how you're feeling and you don't want to feel that way mm. make the investment make the investment time and money so you can start to go to your next level so that's all that i, I wanted to make sure that i said oh my god see like i first i just videoed that whole thing because it's like i I have no words. You know what? I'm ending this podcast interview. Okay, this that was great. We're just going to end it because, boss, you're going to fuck it up. Just leave it with that. Okay, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. Love you. Um, thank you for tuning in. I said that already. This is what happens. I'm, like, so blown away by what you just said. I literally don't have a coherent thought right now. Okay, we're, we're done. Uh, I'll catch you next time on another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. Bye, Alex.